High Bolt Bakers, homemade marshmallow recipes often contain corn syrup, which is not widely available. So I'm going to show you today how you can make homemade fluffy marshmallows with no corn syrup at all. And I'm going to show you how you can make them vegan. It's really easy. We're going to start out in a little bowl. Pour in some water and sprinkle over your powdered gelatin. Once you've sprinkled it, give it a stir all together. So we're just gonna set this aside and let it set. It will take around 10 minutes and it will become nice and firm. So if you are vegan or you don't want to use gelatin, you can always replace the gelatin with the same amount of powdered agar agar. That works really well. If you have agar flakes, that is a different quantity. And I'm gonna put that information on my website so you can read through what works for you. Now in a heavy bottom saucepan, we're gonna add in our water and our sugar. Now for marshmallows, it is best that you use plain white sugar. It's not a good idea if you substitute out this sugar. Now just turn on your heat really, really low. And then all we want to do is let the sugar dissolve. We don't want it to simmer yet. At this stage, feel free to stir your sugar. Once your sugar has dissolved and there's no more grains, we are gonna add in our firm gelatin. And we're just gonna stir this until it dissolves. Once your gelatin has dissolved, we are gonna take out our spatula. Now there is no more stirring once we take out the spatula because now we're gonna put in a candy thermometer. Now a candy thermometer is really important for this recipe because you need precision. We need to get it to 240 degrees Fahrenheit, which is soft ball stage. So it's really, really important to yield you lovely fluffy marshmallows at the end. So I'm gonna put a link on my website, biggerbolderbaking.com for the recipe of the marshmallows and where you can actually buy these. They're really inexpensive and they're really handy. So just clip it on to the side of your pot and then we're gonna turn up the heat to bring this mix to a simmer when we just want a gentle controlled simmer. And we're not gonna stir it, we're just gonna leave it be until it comes to 240 degrees. Being in control in a kitchen is really important, whether you're making caramels, candy, marshmallows, whatever it is. So just always keep an eye on your heat and be in control of how high or how low it is. So this mix is simmering perfectly. I want yours to look like this as well. So it has been simmering for quite a while now. It does take a bit of time, but you see the way it's hanging around, around 220 or so. It does that for quite a while until it reaches a point and then it will get to 240. So just hold your nerve and it'll get there. Okay, great. So we've reached softball stage. I'm going to turn off the heat, carefully take out the candy thermometer. So I'm going to put on some oven gloves and I'm going to move it off the heat. Take very good care when you're doing this. Have your KitchenAid ready and pour the hot sugar mix straight into the bowl. Into this mix, we're gonna add in a little bit of vanilla extract and a pinch of salt. Put on your whisk attachment, and now we're gonna turn on our machine onto a low speed and we're gonna whip it up for two minutes. So after the two minutes, we're gonna turn the machine up to high speed and we're gonna whip it up until this mix has almost tripled in size and it's lovely and soft. While your marshmallows are mixing, we're gonna prepare our tray. So line your tray with some parchment and then brush it with some flavorless oil like vegetable oil, sunflower oil, and then give it a generous dusting of icing sugar. This will prevent your marshmallows from sticking to your tray. So our marshmallows are done. Looks great. Scrape it out of the bowl and into your tray. Once your marshmallows are spread out, we're gonna dust the top with some icing sugar. So what you want to do is just let it sit out at room temperature for three hours and that'll form a skin on top of your marshmallows. Once the three hours is up, flip your marshmallows and then dust again with icing sugar. Let this sit out again for another three hours and then we're ready to cut. Cut your marshmallows into any kinds of shapes that you like. As you can see, our homemade marshmallows are lovely and squishy. They do have a little bit of a different texture compared to store-bought, but they're still delicious. Store your marshmallows at room temperature in an airtight container for up to six weeks. I have lots more bowl baking basics recipes just like this one, so make sure you subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out.